I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, I got, I gotta, I gotta stop you right there, Bill, and tell you, um, the the currency of the people is not Bitcoin. Oh, here we go. I'm it's ready to Dogecoin. fight. I'm ready to fight. Can it's we get, Dogecoin. Can we get in the ring? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Dogecoin. It's you, shit, you, what like you don't think? Shibu in his you, head. You, you don't yeah. think it's Dogecoin? I think that it has really cool characteristics, like that's that are fun and of the people, but it's not architecturally built for the people. Hold it's, on. it's architecturally built to screw people over. Well, 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 hold on. All right, we'll talk about that. Yeah. But let me tell you the story. Dogecoin is up 12,000% since January. Ooh. Here's how much money you'd make if you invested 1,000 bucks in January. If you bought Dogecoin at the beginning of the year, you've enjoyed massive gains over the past four month, months. A $1,000 Dogecoin purchase on January 1st at a price of less than a cent per coin would be worth $121,052 at Wednesday's high of 69 cents, a gain of more than 12,000%. My friend, Dogecoin, it's going to the moon. It probably will be physically put on the moon on a <laughs> on a thumb drive. I, would, I would not be surprised if he did that, but hopefully he'll also put Bitcoin, maybe some mines tokens, who knows? That'd be great. But you, you, you think Dogecoin is, is not it? It's it's it for a, f a purpose of entertainment. It's a meme. It's fun, but it's not it for like, you know, if you look at the 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 code of it, it's Why? not be because it can it's inflating. It's it's not maintained. It's not really decentralized. It's it's how just is, it's so not. Well, so hold, let's let's go one by one. How is it not decentralized? Okay, so um, it's like one guy owns the I mean, Bitcoin mining system. I'm going to bring up a the federal Doge reserve. <laughs> the government's going to seize the guy's mining servers and then. So I'm just going to run through like quick bullet points on, on Doge. So Bitcoin is scarce. There will only ever be 21 million. Doge is infinite. The system is on track to mint 14.4 million new Doge each day and 5.2 billion each year forever. Okay. Ah. It Bitcoin's issuance. This is from this dude Alex Gladstein, uh, who knows a lot about Bitcoin. Um, Bitcoin Dogecoin's issu issuance is unpredictable. It can and has been altered. Uh, Bitcoin is decentralized as a result of robust architecture of full nodes. Um, Dogecoin is not decentralized. Bitcoin has. But how is it not decentralized? Here's the other thing about Doge. People are buying Doge on Robinhood. Look, don't buy crypto on Robinhood. You don't even own the crypto. They're holding it. You can't right. even get the crypto if right. you buy it on Robinhood. So most people who are buying Doge are buying it on Robinhood. They don't even actually own the crypto. This is why you have to control your own wallet. Like it's fine to use centralized exchanges to take custody of your crypto, but you need to set up your own wallet. Like on, on minds.com, if you check out um, our wallet, you set up MetaMask, you control your keys, well, you control Coinbase your wallet, crypto. Right? Coinbase wallet, you do own, you do control your keys. That's a, that's a non-custodial wallet. Yeah. But I mean, these things like, so it's fun. Doge is fun and it's a cool part of what's happening. Like I like Doge, but it's, it's not a good thing to be saying that- Can't they hard fork Doge and then- Why would you it? do that when you already have Bitcoin and Because Ethereum. Doge could be a currency. So can, it, it is. Exactly. Right, so what, what, what do we hear? KFC now takes Dogecoin. Yeah, the Oakland A's are accepting Doge. Did KFC it? Dude, this, this, is what you, what, this is what I'm, I'm saying. Heck. It doesn't matter if it's a box of Kleenex if people have confidence that the Kleenex will get them a cheeseburger, they will clamor for but it. But you can't have confidence that Doge is going to retain its value. You there can't have confidence the U.S. dollar is going to retain but its value. But you can have confidence that Bitcoin is going to in the long term based on the structure of and, it. And gold. And, and gold. silver or yeah. palladium or whatever. The thing about Doge is that it is more like cash and it has the confidence of the people for a very silly reason. It doesn't matter. People want it, and some people want to just have it for the sake of having it. A lot so, do, and that's why it's that's what part of why it's retaining its value because a lot of people are holding Doge, right. and they're actually providing the liquidity for the market for all the whales who are dumping. So yep. you know the the bag, you know the 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 retail, the people are getting left holding the bags of all the people dumping, and it's just it's it it's a joke. Let it be a joke. Don't like. It really the, the the structure. It could be altered in the future to become better, like he was saying. You know, it can the 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 code can be altered, but there's not an active development team around Doge. If why not? There could be. If you've got a building in the middle of Manhattan that's just falling apart, eventually someone's going to be like, "This is prime real estate." 
we can fix this up and make it something better because everybody wants Honestly, to Honestly, I with. hope so. I hope that the development energy around Doge gets revitalized and like, you know, similar in the way that Ethereum is run. Like, so Bitcoin is arguably more decentralized than Ethereum, but the cool thing about Ethereum is that it keeps innovating and they have decentralized governance. Yeah, what are, what are, they, what are they doing now? We were just talking about this the other day that in July, they're going to start <clears throat> deflating the currency or something? Yeah, deflating they're, Ethereum. Yeah, they're introducing uh, a new proposal which burns uh, the base fee to the miners for all the transactions. So, so there will be a deflationary force in Ethereum. So that now. means Ethereum will just start skyrocketing in value. Who knows? It, it would be a pressure it's, point it to seems, cause it to. The, the, the thing about Ethereum is there's so much developer energy. There's so many decentralized apps like mines that are getting that are leveraging the Ethereum network. And we, we integrate Bitcoin as well. But, you know, Doge doesn't have that energy. It's fun, but it would be nothing without Elon. Let's be let's be real. It would not. He is the one fueling it. Worth two he's going to go on. That. He's going to go on SNL. He's going to. People think he's going to do a, a Dogecoin skit. It's going to hit a buck, Normies. and then the whales are going to bail out. Yes. So get ready for that and time it. I, mean, I don't honestly care. sell before SNL. <laughs> no, I, I, I disagree. Uh, well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Not financial. Advice. I'm not. I'm no, not going to no, give it. No. Yeah, no advice to anybody. I don't, why, why, do, why does everyone say that? Because you get sued or something? I. You probably don't have to. I don't know. It's everyone stupid. just says it's, it. Yeah, it's, it's a meme in and of yeah, itself. Yeah. It's, uh, here, here's what I'd say: If you can afford to keep your Doge, you should. In yeah. 2014, is that when? That's when Doge came out, right? Wow. Was it 2014? I'm not sure. I had at some point, I don't remember when, on some some exchange, I had thousands of Doge, and I was laughing how stupid it was, and I, everyone was laughing and it was a joke and it was like such currency, such crypto, wow, and everyone mm -hmm. was ha ha memes, 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 and then I was like whatever, and I lost them. I have no idea where any of these coins are. Now it's worth you know sixty cents or whatever, and I'm like it'd be sure great to know what happened to those coins, but I said that about everything. I had a computer with like Bitcoin on it, got destroyed and didn't care and just threw it away because it was like a dollar worth of Bitcoin that's not worth like a couple hundred thousand dollars and it's all gone. So that's why I'm like, you know what? At this point, there, there, there were some other currencies that I had purchased a decent amount of like way back in the day because I was like at one, at some point in a few years, one of these currencies might go from like one cent to five cents and I'll be really happy. And then I just got paper hands and I was like, mm, ah, I just rather have Bitcoin. And then I switched all the back to Bitcoin. And while Bitcoin has performed beautifully over the past several years, there are some currencies that I wish I held on to because the gains were from like one cent to like a dollar, which is way better than Bitcoin was. So now I'm just kind of like, you know, man, maybe maybe uh, we're seeing the Dogecoin memification or whatever. But I'll tell you this. I'm going to keep it. Yeah, yeah. I just like Why not? you're not going to make the same mistake. You, you you made the mistake before, so you don't want to make the mistake again. I also don't have so much Doge that I'm going to like become rich off of it. Or, or like become poor off of it. It's like maybe if I had 10 million Doge or something, I'd sell and be like, I don't want to do, play that game. Right. But I don't. I have very right. little, you know. Most people yeah, probably have only a little I mean, bit that, anyway. But th that's sort of the thing that is sort of a sickness in the crypto space is actually people just trying to get 10Xs. Right. And, and th they're manipulators. You know, the thing that I love about crypto is that you're sort of voting with your resources. So I don't like to participate in tokens that I just think that their value is going to go up. It's not. Why are you giving energy to that? So I'm not saying never, you know, maybe there's a, a place for it, but it, it, bro, Bitcoin is changing how society works. And that's why it's an amazing thing to put your money into it because you're you're helping that happen. We should set up Doge ATMs. Yeah, I that's can't a good stand idea. Doge. I wouldn't be you surprised. Can't stand Doge? No, I just can't. It's so fake. It's such trash. It's a tr it's a trash coin. It's the ultimate trash coin. Elon Musk is the ultimate troll. <laughs> he's a ge he, he's hilarious. I love him. And you think Elon has like a billion doses? Yeah. Oh yeah. He probably went. His so kids hard. are mining it. Oh really? Yeah, he said it. I, I saw something. So you like said that. Doge isn't decentralized. Well, it's it. You know, there are miners, but it, so it is partially decentralized. But it's it's not nothing compared to Bitcoin. So it's a variant scale of of how decentralized is this token? Whenever you're looking at a crypto, right? And certain cryptos are more or less. 
Like, are there cryptos that are completely centralized where like one person can print? That's all? what a digital dollar would be. So here's here's the problem I see with Bitcoin, though. Only 21 million coins can ever come into existence, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of them are already gone because when Bitcoin was valueless, people didn't care and lost them. Like that famous guy who was searching a dumpster for a, 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 a trash dump for his hard drive because it had like, oh, man, by now that hard drive is probably worth like 100, 200 million dollars. But it was like, it's worth now $2 million. He needs to go find it, that hard drive with his coins on it. So there is just the, the natural decay of Bitcoin. That's what, good. So That's then, deflationary. But right. So over a long enough period of time, there won't be enough Bitcoin. No, anymore, you, just, you can split it up into 100 million units. So a Satoshi, which is the smallest unit of Bitcoin, right. will just appreciate in value. So you, it, it's not, I, I don't think that the, there's, there's plenty of divisibility within Bitcoin. So if Bitcoin became universally adopted around the planet with, you know, 8 billion people and people need to trade with it every day, then a Satoshi would have to be worth somewhere around like a nickel. He has a million Bitcoin or something. Satoshi? Satoshi. Satoshi. <laughs> right. So, and it's never moved. It's never moved. And it's very important that it's never moved. Why so, is that? Well, because if people started to see the, the creator, you know, getting paper hands, Right, right, that right, wouldn't right. be good. Well, so imagine Bitcoin becomes universally used, right? One Satoshi would have to be around the value of a nickel or so because in or, as, it, as it stands today to be right. able to participate in a general marketplace uh, or, labor, or labor. Theoretically, it could be around a penny per Satoshi, but I think that's people don't really use pennies all that much. Yeah. But there's a lot of countries where a penny probably does have a lot more value. It so, doesn't really matter if we're using the smallest unit, like in comparison to, you know, a fiat comparable. I think like right now the, the Bitcoin market's like a little over a trillion. The gold market cap for reference is 10 trillion. So if the Bitcoin market just gets to what gold is, then we're at like 500 K per Bitcoin. So you just start of you start thinking about Bitcoin is like eating away at where resources are, are stored. All we need to do is 10 X to get at gold. And then if you start bringing in so all different financial instruments dollars per Bitcoin, if it 10 X is, yeah. I think Bitcoin will be a million bucks. Oh, for sure. So and I think, thing, I think sooner than people realize there's a model called the stock to flow model, which is like the model of Bitcoin in it. Cause every four years, the reward, the, it, there's this thing called the having, which is where the mind having or the, a, either is it having either people say both, but so the rewards to all the miners, drop in half so you know it's, they it's more right scarcity it's more in, no no no. it's just the, the the ongoing rewards that they get for right, mining right, right, right. drop right. in half so it, it you know they don't, they don't necessarily sell but it just creates more scarcity and historically there have been two having so far and after each half having you know over the last 10 years the you've seen doubles, a, a, a right. order of magnitude and so the stock to flow model shows that, you know, over the next 15 years, it's going to be order of when's, magnitude. When's the next happening? Uh, it was just a couple of years ago. So it's like in a couple of years. Oh, OK. So then. Or maybe it's not gonna, in a couple of years. It's going to effectively double. So uh, people often ask, what is the, what what backs a bit Bitcoin's value? And I don't know if this is like an archaic understanding, but it's the energy used to produce it. So if somebody is mining Bitcoin and it costs them you know, $60,000 to mine one Bitcoin, they're not going to sell it for less than the cost of the production. Mm. So then they'll put it on the market and say, I got to get at least 61K and probably more than that. And then people who want to buy because they want to use it are going to have to pay the price of what the miners are asking for. Yeah. And it's potentially going to do great things for sustainable energy. Like people say, oh, Bitcoin uses so much energy. It's like an environmental disaster, which it does use a lot of energy. It's it's a worth it. Isn't it kind of arbitrary? Is but, Ethereum better? Well, no, it's not better or worse. They, they're, they're different technologies for different purposes. I mean, you build apps on top of Ethereum. Bitcoin is just like the juggernaut godfather of ledger for global monetary transactions. It, that's all that it needs to be. And there are like layer two things happening so that there will be other, you know, apps potentially on Bitcoin. But, you know, it's... It's just crazy that this is happening. It's well, actually so, like but you don't you don't you think it's going to help the energy situation? Well, because people like energy can be converted into Bitcoin. So right. like there's, you know, the if there if you have a landfill and there's like methane overflow, like you could potentially throw a mine on top of that. I got it. You know what we should do? 
we should create power plants that recycle the heat from mining Bitcoin to boiling water and spinning turbines. Or we can put GPUs in people's homes that mine Bitcoin and the, ex- and the radiant heat will heat their rooms. Yeah, it's, called, it's called Exergy. It's an actual Exergy. project, yeah, where your computer <laughs> heats water tanks. We were just talking, Bill and I actually visited a guy in, in New York that was working on this. And um, then the tubes will go through your house, these hot water tubes. To cool and down. Warm so, or cool the house, yeah. Well, so you need, you need to cool your computer, your, your, your CPU and your GPU need to be cooled. And so the heat we want for warmth, the computer wants the cold. So, hey, there you go. A lot of people say like Facebook has servers in the Arctic. And yep. like, dude, but that yeah. heat is valuable. You just need to recover it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. People want to heat their homes. So let's just do it with, uh, with Bitcoin mining. So in, the, in, in winter, you make money. You're like, oh, it's getting gold. Better make some Bitcoin. Crank it up. Yeah. No, there, I, I predict mining rigs in this, in this compound in the next few years. This compound? I, I don't think so. No? Why? It's I easy. Just throw up a computer. You know, f- have fun. Mine's it costs some money. Yeah, but you can Mine's figure it. There's, there, there's, there's an ROI. So what, what's Ethereum is proof of stake, though. How do, they, how do you generate? Well, they're, they're not proof of stake yet. Right. Okay. So they're transitioning. If the, the Ethereum blockchain is still proof of work like Bitcoin. So these miners. That, so how many Ethereum are there? How much Ethereum is there? Uh, some people, the, the, it's harder to pinpoint the exact supply um, in Ethereum. It is, it is sort of limited. I don't know the actual number. And a lot of people criticize Ethereum for that reason. But that doesn't mean that it's like very inflationary, just the way that it's set up. It's it's harder to pinpoint the ex- the exact number exact at any number. given time. But, um, you know, they are they're they're bringing in this deflationary force. But proof of stake is basically where there are validator nodes all over the world that people run the machines. You can run on your laptop. And if you have 32 ETH, you can stake that ETH into that validator validator node and basically earn it generates yield. more Ethereum. It, it gen- yeah, you earn you earn Ethereum for for staking ETH into but is validator it, nodes. Is it generating it, or is it a tra- is it is a fee that you're getting from the existing amount of Ethereum? Both. Both. Well, you're ge- miners. I'm I might be wrong here, but miners are earning fees for all the transactions that are happening in the network. That's gas and Ethereum and, and Bitcoin miners. Actually. In Bitcoin, after all of the mining rewards are over, which is in like 100 years or something, then fees are going to be uh, rewarding all of the miners. But that's how it works in Ethereum now. But there are, there are also Ethereum that are, are getting created. Thanks for checking out this clip from the TimCast IRL podcast. If you want to see the full show, come back to this channel, youtube.com slash TimCast IRL, Monday through Friday at 8 p.m., where you can leave comments and super chat, and we actually will read your comments on the show. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and if you want exclusive members-only content, segments you can't get anywhere else, go to TimCast.com, become a member, and we even have full bonus episodes. Thanks for hanging out. And we'll see you all next time.